good morning. You're about to watch an edited version of our service from this morning. It was streamed from here, which is our house because I have enough symptoms that I really should be self-isolating. So I am, I am practicing what I preach and I hope you enjoy the service. I've now edited in all the pieces we lost earlier and um, just have a great Easter and a good day. And Christ really is risen. We uh, just need to have that said to ourselves in a slightly different way this year. Talk to you soon. Hallelujah, Bye. Christ is risen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on high. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We were witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 118, to God. verses 1 through 2, 12 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Epistle for Easter Day 
is Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Hey, I've just switched my phone because for some reason my camera won't pick up audio, so I hope you can hear me now. 
Anyway, it's good to celebrate Easter with you. I am at home because I'm not feeling too well, which probably is not helping my technological capabilities, which are strained right now anyway. But back to the gospel. I really like this story of Mary Magdalene. It's one of my favorites in the Bible. Um, it's the story of someone who is right at their end. They're at their furthest limit. They don't know what they're doing or where they're going. They are just all wrung out. And really, there's nothing else for her to do or to say except just, she just stops. She just kind of begs and then suddenly everything changes. And I wonder how many of us have had that experience of just really being wrung out and on our very end last nerve and we just somehow encounter God and everything changes. I think right now, uh, the fact I'm broadcasting from my living room says a lot. Um, I've been on and on at you to stay at home if you're not feeling good and then when it hit me, I'm like, uh -huh, I really wanna go to church, but I didn't. But this whole experience really is asking, making me ask, what is our faith about? What's Easter about? And, you know, who are we as community and how do we gather as community? And I think that's really taught me a lot because although I think I'm not someone who relies on externals, I probably do rely on them more than um, I should or I want to admit. And so it's been really hard being in church on my own. And that's not really relying on externals, it's relying on someone else to be there because we do things as a community. So in some sort of strange way, being stuck at home actually kind of brings me closer alongside you, at least from my point of view. It probably disappoints you that we don't have the church in the background, but there we go. Anyway, um, I'm not gonna go on too long, but I do want to encourage us during this time, as I said in my letter, to think about what our faith really means. Christ is risen, whether or not we're in church to say it, whether we're feeling well or not, whether we're worried or angry or scared, Christ is risen. And we have to hold on to that. So when we say today, Alleluia, Christ is risen, and reply, he is risen indeed, Alleluia, it's not just words. But how is that not just words for you? How do you actually engage with that and keep that keep that central and my com apparently my computer is still on as well so that's really good um how do you keep that affirmation of christ being risen um as central to your life even when everything around you has shifted uh, i think that's our work for this season and i hope i sincerely hope that when we come back together after this time we actually will be more centered on our faith. We will have figured out which things matter. We will have figured out what the resurrection means and what it means to be a resurrection people. I think there's all sorts of good things that could come out of this. Do not hear me say this is not horrible. It isn't. But going through this together, I hope, will make us stronger. And I was thinking yesterday about all the things the vestry have been talking about many of which really for a church should be second nature and common sense because they're all about mission and evangelism. And I hope that we find some of our core during this time. I hope that we really do begin to understand what God is calling us to without all the distractions that we often get tangled up in. Anyway, I'm starting to run out of breath, so I will stop talking. But I'd like you to join me in renewing our baptism vows if you have the Book of Common Prayer, it is on page 292. If you don't, you can just say yes at the end of all of them, and that counts. That's actually a rubric in England. If you can't say the proper answers, you can say yes. So, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbour as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and has bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins. Keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 2, begin on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our Bishop Jose, for our Presiding Bishop Michael Curry. For this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Merciful God, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
So we will use Eucharistic Prayer A, which is on page 361 of your Book of Common Prayer. So just calm down from all the noise we were making. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. For this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are able to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. <coughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God, for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And now if you pray to God and say that you... Um, wish that you could receive and you would if you could and that God will give you the same grace as if you were in church this morning receiving a sacrament. Let 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.